slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time. So let's get to it. One limper to me and I raised a 12 with ace-king of clubs. Three players call, including the small blind short stack who's playing literally every hand. Great flop for me and short stack leads for 15. I'm the only caller and on this turn, he shoves for 63. I'm almost always behind here to at least a pair and probably some random two pair. And while I really don't like gambling, despite the fact that this is poker, this player in the small blind keeps winning with trash and I'm sick of it. So I hold my breath and pray to the poker gods to do what's right. Call. Cool. And this is the moment where I start to question whether I'm wasting my Sundays at Poker Church. My 8-6 offsuit BFF raises with 8 of my dollars from the hijack. I call from the button with ace-deuce of hearts and the big blind calls. On an ace-high flop, hijack bets 15. I call and the big blind folds. I've got the worst kicker in the deck, so if he's got an ace, I'm in rough shape. It turns another ace, making it less likely he's got one, but he bets another 15. River doesn't change much, and he bets a borderline insulting $10. I'm either way ahead or way behind, so I flick in the call. And I get some money back, not unlike when you get a tax refund after the IRS plays 8-6 offsuit. How do you approach bad beats? Poorly. I'm under the gun with jacks, raise to 20, and get four callers. Big blind checks, and I bet 45. Under the gun one calls, and the rest full. This player's been chasing draws all day, so I'm treading lightly. I could check this turn, but that ace connects better with my range than his. If he's got sixes through tens, he'll have to fold. So I take a stab for 50. When he raises to 125, it's either door number one, nice bluff, or door number two, I'm way behind. As I fold, he opens door number two, plus another door number two, because he had two twos. I'll see myself out. I'm in early position with ace-king of spades and raise to 11 while my camera captures mostly body hair and fleece. Before the button calls, there's a call from a very old man wearing only one winter glove. I check flop, and there's a $15 bet from one glove gill, and everyone folds as he tables pocket kings. This old man, he flats kings, he flats kings without raising. Despite that epic parody from me, this hand is mostly unremarkable, except that it lays the foundation for the dumpster fire ahead. Viewer discretion advised. After a cutoff limp, I've got rockets in the small blind and raised to 15. I get a caller in cold hand Luke from the big blind and the limper. Flop is okay for aces, I'm likely ahead and should bet to build the pot and protect my hand. But given how frigid fingers Frank played his pocket kings, I start to second guess. Did he flat pre-flop with pocket jacks or pocket tens? So I chicken out and check, and Danny Glover bets 26. After the cutoff folds, I call, convinced I'm ahead, but also not at all convinced I'm ahead. The turn brings in the flush and we both check. Now I put him on a jack and no flush. A club on the river would bail out my terrible play, but instead it's a jack. I check, and medieval Michael Jackson bets a tiny 27. Low chance he's got a flush, high chance he's got a jack, no chance I'm ahead. And yet I still call, not because I'll win, because I won't, but because I don't deserve this $27. Also, he could use it to buy another glove. Later that night, I set fire to my poker books and choose a more effective way of raising my edge. What are you doing in there? I'm working. And now, Slow Poker presents the critically acclaimed three-part miniseries, I Didn't Ask For This. A bunch of limpers make me play a hideous ace-three offsuit. Cut off bets 10, I check raise to 30, and he calls. I boat up on the turn and put them all in for his remaining 10. He calls and complains that I got lucky with the ace. I could explain that I didn't need the turn, and that he should reconsider playing Jack-3 off in the first place, but instead I show him a low-res video from the mid-90s. Now I didn't want to have to do this, but you brought this on yourself! A bunch of limpers make me play a nauseating Queen-8 offsuit. I flop trips, it checks around. Turn changes nothing, I bet 10, big blind calls. River tees up the most predictable ending since the movie Titanic. I bet 20, he raises to 50, I call. The ship sank? No way. A bunch of limpers make me play a revolting 7-4 offsuit. The flop checks around. The turn's great, so I lead for 15 and get a caller from the under-the-gun short stack. I have made it very clear I just got trips, so he should only have the other 7 or a flush draw. The river brings in another jack, and I get gun shy on my assumption and check. Then the unthinkable happens. Logically speaking, this guy shouldn't have a jack. If he does, then he called off one-fifth of his stack on the turn with only a 4% shot of winning. That makes no sense. On the other hand, what did he say again? Well, that's clearly pretend weakness. Also, he only shoves with a jack, but my brain is broken. I know it's a fold for all those reasons, but I level myself into thinking this can only be a chop. Because no jack should call with a 4% shot. I think this is a chop. Yeah, I call. And as poorly as ace-jack played that hand, who's got one cold thumb and one warm thumb and played it worse? And that'll do it for episode two of Slow Poker. It would mean the world to me if you'd like and subscribe. Also, if you bought Slow Poker merch. Until next time, this has been Slow Poker.